Coming up live on Live Wire, we've got a great show for you today. You must sit down, get something to write with, because this is a very important show. I'm, I'm pleased to have here uh, the executive director of Meals on Wheels. I'm going to talk about services to the community during this really tough time that we're going through and, and all the kinds of programs that uh, they have developed uh, to serve the people in need in our community and the wider community. Of, uh, and also then we're also gonna have a, a representative, Jesse Chenchu, from uh, Opening Doors, which is a service organization that deals with uh, whole kinds of uh, ser services for people, including uh, refugees, uh, and you wanna learn more about that, tune in, sit down, watch this show. Meals on Wheels by ACC delivers over 12,000 meals a week to Sacramento seniors, 60 and above. This year, we celebrated our 10th year of service and delivered our 5 millionth meal. Over 500 dedicated volunteers, 45 employees, and community support make this possible and help us ensure that seniors don't go hungry. Let's continue feeding vulnerable seniors and make this holiday season special for them. Please visit mosac.org and donate today. That is so, Kevin McAllister, it is amazing to talk to you, and I'm interested in your, how you deliver so many meals, and what is the impetus? Sure, and that's actually an older commercial, so we're at our six millionth meal now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in 12 years, so I'm super excited to reach that number. Um, COVID put us over the top, of course. You know, we saw a huge increase in the, in mm -hmm. the need during the pandemic. So, um, what happens, give me the scenario of how someone gets a meal from Meals on Wheels. Sure, they call our office and you know say, I need a meal. Um, our staff members go out, do an assessment to determine if they're a good fit for our home, uh, for a home delivered meal program. Mm -hmm. That's for homebound seniors. And um, those that are mobile, they call our office and we um, refer them to our congregate nutrition program, uh, which has 20 uh, sites for lunchtime meals. Right now is uh, curbside pickup because of the pandemic. So what's happening now in terms of COVID and are, we, are meals, uh, the amount of meals shrinking or growing? Oh, growing, growing, growing. growing. Uh, prior to the pandemic, we were serving about 1800 meals a day. We're over 3000 meals a day now. Yeah. So do you have a whole crew that jumps in trucks and cars? And oh things? yeah. Trucks, are these cars. volunteers or? Uh, we have paid staff and volunteers. I see. Over 200 volunteers help us uh, deliver these meals. That's amazing. Absolutely. That's amazing. So, um, and, uh, so how are you supported? I mean, does somebody just kind of like write a check for you? Yeah, sometimes I write one, you know. No. Oh, you do? <laughs> okay. Uh, we're federally and state funded and, of course, uh, donations as well from um, – our wonderful community. Donations, aha. You're bringing up the idea that, you know, coming up is the big day of giving. I do know. And people ought to know that that's going to happen, and they should get ready and uh, watch this program because we're going to go through a number of organizations, and then they can fund those organizations. You know, you know, whip out their yeah. checkbook, their wallet, and say, so how many meals can a 20 get me? You know, with fuel costs and, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much, though? Yeah, 20. Five? Five meals? That, this is one meal now. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. You're one meal. At least I got okay. one meal out. Okay. I will use this. All right. Cool. Tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got hungry. <laughs> so I think it's fascinating. So you have a, like a board of directors. We do. And uh, they support your organization uh, through major gifts. Major like gifts. Um, you know, strategic planning. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're a wonderful group. 
Good. And so um, on the big day of giving, you guys will be out there stalking the world, uh, looking for support from general people like me who just lost. Right? No, yeah, gave you this, is, this is our first gift. Yeah. Yes, it's, it is good. <laughs> At any rate, it's, it, it really is interesting. So uh, where do you deliver meals? In this county, is this uh, pretty much set up in this county? All of Sacramento County. So uh -huh. Folsom, Galt, Isleton, Rancho Cordova, Natomas, you name it. The entire mm -hmm. county. The entire county. Yes. Wow. So w w you were walking down the street one new day and you thought, gosh, I think I'll work for an organization called Meals on Wheels. Yeah, what better organization to serve? Yeah. I mean, no, no I mean, is there kind of some kind of issue that drew, drove you closer to it? You know, I have worked with youth and families now for about 23 years. And oh, over, that, over that time, I, I, I really got into supporting um, underserved communities, uh -huh. access to food, and I, and I thought this was a great opportunity for me. And access to food, yeah. And um, does the food industry here help you in any way? Oh, absolutely. Well, tell me about absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we receive a lot you of can, support. You can name names. I can name names. Can name names. Sure you can. Uh, we have Drewski's Hot Rod Kitchen. Uh, they help out a lot. Um, they have saved us so many times. Uh, Selen's Market. So, you know, Selen's, mm -hmm. Oboe. Um, yeah. We yeah, have a this lot is of good. Restaurants good, good. And us. they give you food and... Uh, and yeah, they give us food or they help us prepare meals. You know, oh, okay. We've even partnered with, you know, Mulvaney's and Benchoyaki and a lot of the other organizations. They really supported us at the start of the pandemic. So if I wanted to be a volunteer, uh, what would I do? Just give us a call. Give us a call. Yeah. Okay, and I think we're going to put somewhere on the screen here, folks, if you want to be a volunteer and help deliver these uh, meals. Yes. Yeah, not eat them. Not eat them. Yeah. I mean, you can eat them too. But. There it is, right on the screen. Well, I tell you, they, they found the right button there, back there in the studio. <laughs> www.mowsac.org. Mosac.org, yeah. Okay, good. So is it, you say that the amount of, of requests is growing. Yes. Well, how do you figure what does that mean? I mean, it more, you know, Folks need more access to meals, yeah. um, you know, with, it's been hard for a lot of seniors, you know, financially. Yes. And, and um, so we're out there to support. A lot of people are out of work too. Just drive down the street, J Street. Out of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing situation, I must say. And so um, do you even provide food for hungry pets? We do. It's our Anna Meals program. So. We started that program a couple of years ago because we noticed that some of our seniors uh -huh. were feeding their meals to their pets because they couldn't afford uh, pet food. I'm a senior and I have a dog. Hold on, let me call my wife. Yeah, I got. I, I'll hook it up for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> but we do. I can buy some cat dog food. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a. Uh, it is amazing, and people should not feel like they. They should get on the phone and call you, folks. Absolutely, we want them to call. You know, okay. this is a program for anyone 60 and, and better. You don't I say see. 60 and above or 60 and older, 60 yeah. and better. Oh, yeah, okay, that, yeah. sounds, that sounds good. Good, good, good. And um, so your board then, uh, exp uh, they talk about program support in, in any way. Are there other kinds of uh, program areas that you find interesting for an organization? Yeah, they do support us with, you know, rebuilding together. So that's another um, organization that we work with to make the home safe for our seniors so rebuilding. home safe yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah I wrap that. bars and bed lighting and stairs we we do it all with that team. so good 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 yeah. that's it you know grab bars are important it's, uh, the bathtubs and things like that seeing a lot of seniors have older homes that have only bathtubs you no know, showers right. and even in the shower you want something to hold on to yeah and we give shower chairs fans uh -huh. yeah, we we do as much as we can Oh, this is good, good, good. Well, it's really interesting. So let's have a look at some uh, photographs of uh, people doing what they do best. Oh, there's people looking for food, right? Look at the, oh, and there it is up there. Oh, okay, that's one of our lunch sites, yes. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a site for people to eat? Yeah, so that's one of our um, restaurant programs. So okay. we have a few restaurants that we partner with for a meal voucher program. So those are a few of our participants there. Well, I hope they there. take their masks off. And yeah. They can eat the food in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's have another one. Uh, oh, one of our volunteers delivering meals to one of our participants. Yeah, it looks good. Yes. They're always happy to see us. Those are uh, our team members. Aha. 
Okay, those are uh, volunteers, or your, or your, those are your. Those are staff. Staff. Okay. Okay. Yes, and volunteers actually. And the, the staff primarily, what do they do? They make the food or prepare it. So they um, staff the sites, uh, uh -huh. deliver the meals as well. We have another team that produces the meals for us. Wow, and that's a lot of meals to go it's, out. That's it's amazing. A, that's one of our curbside pickup sites. Uh, so we have thirteen of those. Uh huh. Um, so one of our volunteers has been with us for. What's in the big box? Over 10 years. A cake years. for me? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nutrition. Nutrition's important, right? It is. Ah, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. We're back oh, to you. That, yeah, that's me up there. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. So what's the future of uh, looking like in terms of support? Uh, we're getting a lot of support. And, yep. um, you know, especially big day giving, fundraising yep. for that. Um, yeah. So, um, and what will I do? What am I supposed to be me? I'm Mr. Giver. And uh, what, what do I do on the big day of giving, which is when? May 5th, 2022. Uh, share with your friends and family. Encourage them to give to Meals on Wheels by ACC. And so what they do is they get on the phone and say, here's my card number. Uh, they can go. Well, there's actually a website for the big day giving. Uh -huh. But, you know, they could call and we can support them with uh, going through that platform or they can visit our office and, and drop off a donation as well. OK, and where is that? Uh, we're in the pocket area. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> a nice place to visit. <laughs> so you can either do that or get on um, uh, the big day of giving giving calendar and make sure that that happens. Absolutely. Yeah, that'll be a big day, I think. Oh, yeah, it's always fun. I enjoy it. Good, 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 good. Well, it's fantastic. And I, it's a it's an amazing thing that you actually help pets survive here. You know, you wonder. Uh, how some poor people, they they need the dogs for support or their or whatever or they may be, uh, you know, uh, and feeding them just as well. Yeah, they're family, and yeah. so that's why we we love doing that. And yeah. it, nutrition's important because you know if they're feeding their pets, then what are they eating? Oh, so we talked about uh, what you do, which is interesting, and in, in terms of uh, giving out meals to hundreds, thousands, thousands, thousands. <laughs> And um, and then also the uh, structure of your organization, which has volunteers. So I could volunteer if I can, and help to, uh, make the food, deliver the food, right? Yeah. Oh, and the, or I could be a sponsor, right? Absolutely. Give you some cash. Give me like like Give you just me a did. Hard twenty, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and hope that that keeps it going for the time that we're now going through, which is really amazing yeah. time yeah yeah so and your board of directors of course you want people who are um who know about this kind of uh, organization yeah. right who have background and who are willing to uh give of their time uh, at the meetings and give of their pocketbook right it's really you know it's really their time you know they our board is so passionate about you know our cause and ensuring that we're able to keep people in their homes safely, mm -hmm. you know, fed, and it's the visits, you know, a lot of our board members are actually volunteers and they deliver meals mm -hmm. and they've developed these relationships with the, their, our, we call them participants, but our clients. So some of them have been delivering for 20 years plus to I the see. same people. It's, it's incredible. I see. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> what really uh, gets me is that how people, there are many people driven to provide services just like the uh, Meals on Wheels. Uh, uh, and uh, the organizations um, that are serving uh, Sacramento area, I have found to be, by comparison with other counties in California, uh, an amazing thing. There's m so much giving in terms of uh, people wanting to provide that kind of uh, service uh, to people in our county. Uh, and it's just laudable. What you do is laudable. Thank you. All right. Kevin, Kevin, thank you so much for talking to me about this, and uh, we hope that Meals on Wheels achieves good times. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Okay, we're going to take a short pause for the cause, and we're going to be back after some important messages. Every year, 
tens of thousands of young people experience homelessness. If you or someone you know needs help, 1-800-RUNAWAY can provide support and connect you to the right resources. Together, we can end youth homelessness. So there you are, it's flu season, and you're over 65 like me. You might be forgetting something serious. <gasps> Your annual flu shot. The flu can be life-threatening, especially if you have chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease, which can worsen with the flu. The immune system weakens with age. Ask about a flu vaccine option made specifically for us. Visit ncoa.org slash flu to learn more and talk to your doctor about vaccine options for people 65 and older. <laughs> There's a quiet battle happening on our streets. Pedestrians are acting indestructible. And drivers act like they own the road. They're both wrong. Be aware, be alert. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. With me in the studio is Jesse Chenchu, who is the CEO That's for right. Opening Doors. That's right. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, welcome. And uh, it's a very interesting, another service organization that really provides services to people who are uh, refugees, mm -hmm. who are immigrants from, you know, mm -hmm. uh, who are poor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you do you have like a criteria or do you have a service organization that you work with to make all of these good things happen tell me tell me what you do sure um, opening doors got started in 1993 as a ministry outreach of a local presbyterian church mm -hmm. and we became an independent organization in the early 2000s uh, initially serving refugees and over the years we've expanded to serving immigrants and survivors of human trafficking through a range of programs. We have an incredibly diverse staff and um, communities that we serve. We're a staff of about 40, and together we speak over 10 languages, um, you know, really reflecting the diversity of the Sacramento community. Can we go through each one of those situations and mm -hmm. talk about, talk about um, what's happening, you know, uh, Ukrainians? Yeah. Uh, tell me about the Ukrainian people. Yeah, we, um, Sacramento has a significant Ukrainian population. Uh, we have been actually welcoming Ukrainian refugees in, in small numbers for, for many, many years mm -hmm. here in Sacramento. And we anticipate that that number will increase um, given the current events. We know that there are already Ukrainian um, asylum seekers who have made their way to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And recently, President Biden announced that the United States will welcome 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. So we um, stand ready for that, and we are looking forward to welcoming our new neighbors once, they, once they're on their way here. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a long haul, and so uh, mm -hmm. I, I like what Poland is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think that that is? That is a, a, a way of uh, dealing with the issue because it's yeah. right on the border. Yeah, I mean, what, what happens in these situations is that people are forced to flee for their safety and to protect themselves and their families. They often um, don't want to resettle into a third country because they hope, they dream that they will be able to go back home. So what we see happening in Poland and in other countries in Europe where people are being offered safe places to stay um, and to shelter for the meantime, um, you know, hopefully that will continue. And I know that we are all praying for, for peace in Ukraine and that families who can return um, will be able to return. But if families need to resettle into a different permanent home, then Sacramento will be here to, to welcome them to our community. That's good. It's good to hear, because mm -hmm. uh, I've always wondered. People wonder what I mean. We can't. I mean, the the news doesn't necessarily report this kind of uh, mm -hmm. 
you know, self-help working and, and helping people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I thought that's a fascinating. So how, how in, in general, do you support uh, refugees and, and mm-hmm. people who are running from death? Yeah. So we are one of five resettlement agencies working here in Sacramento. When we work with a newly arriving refugee family, we pick them up at the airport and we do everything we can um, over a short period of time, a couple of months, Mm -hmm. to help them establish networks in their new communities. So that is helping them get an apartment or a home, getting kids enrolled in schools, Uh getting mom and dad into employment services and English language classes, and doing what they need to do to establish some stability here in their new home. If they don't speak English, but uh, I understand that a lot of them do speak English or some English, Mm -hmm. that they have like two two or three languages there, right? Dari and... Yeah, so the the Afghan um, populations, the most common languages are are Dari Farsi or Pashto or Urdu. Um, Sacramento has been home to a significant... Um, population of Afghan refugees as well over the years. Yes. Many of them are what's called special immigrant visa holders, which is a complicated way of saying that they were translators or otherwise helped the military in Mm -hmm. our presence there. So Mm -hmm. many of those individuals actually have great English language skills Uh um, because of the work that they did back home in Afghanistan. And so they, if they have the English skills already, are able to just get right into, into the job market. The people who support and uh, uh, agencies that support your organization, do they realize that this is a long haul thing? Yeah, you know, we are so lucky to be here in Sacramento in a community that shares our values of welcoming and inclusivity. Mm -hmm. And it's a very long haul process because those immediate needs of stabilization, you know, a safe place to sleep, some food in the in the pantry, those sorts of things that can happen in the first weeks and months. But there's a long period of adjustment as people make ties in their new communities, establish relationships here, um, potentially seek mental health support to deal with the trauma that they may have experienced mm-hmm. on their path to Sacramento. Yeah. You know, further their education and employment goals. So it's it's a long term process, and we're really lucky to be surrounded by a community that shares in our desire to support yeah. our neighbors. And this is uh, their kind of an action that has been taken in, in past wars almost in, in, for a long, long time. I happen to know, I read a book on um, Evanston, Illinois, which mm-hmm. had a, a large development area. And, and when the Poles and the Russians had a war after World War I, mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, they were afraid that the Russians would go in and uh, do what they're wanting to yeah. do now. And um, so uh, they sent whole families, especially families uh, that had, you know, the possibility of being pointed out mm-hmm. as. And uh, they sent them to Evanston, and they founded a church there, mm-hmm. and they founded, they did all kinds of uh, activities mm-hmm. there. And um, what happened was is that um, then... Uh, some of them um, decided to stay and Mm -hmm. some went home. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we see that many faith traditions share those values of welcoming the stranger um, and that that sort of thing. And so many of our volunteers and supporters Mm -hmm. are called to support us because of their own faith and their own values. Uh We have some photos. Uh, Do we have some pictures? Could we see them? You can shake your head. We can't see them. No, okay, we have some technical difficulties. Oh, there, look at that. A technical difficulty, and I, <laughs> we get to see something. What was that? <laughs> Opening doors. There it is up mm-hmm. there. That's the organization we're talking to, and, mm-hmm. and they will also be a, one of the Big Day of Giving recipients. Mm-hmm. So you can either save your money or jump into it right now and get on their website at www.openingdoorsincorporated.org, mm-hmm. right? That's right. Way cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I find that really fabulous. So let's move over to another area, mm-hmm. uh, uh, one that uh, when I moved to Sacramento oh, a few decades ago, mm-hmm. um, I got into this kind of uh, work and found that human trafficking, that l- Sacramento was like the center for mm-hmm. human trafficking. Mm-hmm. What is human trafficking and why? 
Sure. So human trafficking generally falls into one of two categories, either sex trafficking or labor trafficking. And it's the use of force, fraud or coercion um, for someone else's financial gain. And Sacramento has, you know, like many places, has Mm -hmm. a big issue with human trafficking here for lots of different reasons. We are close to major interstate highways. We are surrounded by industries that may have labor violations or labor trafficking happening within them. So what we find are that individuals who are leaving trafficking situations need a lot of the same sort of supports as newly arriving refugee families. They need to find an apartment, to get health care, um, to get kids enrolled in school. And actually, immigrants are incredibly um, vulnerable mm-hmm. to particularly labor trafficking. Many individuals are, are enticed to come to the United States on what they believe is, is just are, are legitimate yeah. you know, work-related reasons. Yes. And then once they find themselves here, they are actually you know, using coercion or fraud. Work these exactly. two and a half years. Yeah. Right. And they, you know, don't get to um, have control over their own schedules. There are labor violations. There are all sorts of things that can Mm -hmm. happen. And oftentimes, um, traffickers may use the threat of deportation as a method to try to control individuals as well. I see. So once those individuals and sometimes families have managed to escape their trafficking situation, if they are an immigrant, we're able to also assist them with their immigration status as well. So Jesse, um, tell me then, what's the state of it by comparison with other places? How are we doing? We only have a minute. You know, we are an incredibly diverse community. So we are a wonderful home for refugees and immigrants to contribute to the community and to thrive. So that's good. So uh, we, and in this minute, we're also going to say, tell me what telephone number to call to make a donation. Sure, well, one of the best ways to do it is to go online, openingdoorsinc.org. You can also follow us on all of our social media. We're at Opening Doors Inc. on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll be posting about Big Day of Giving there as well. That's great. And how do you feel about working for such an organization? You know, it is a joy and a blessing. I have actually volunteered for Opening Doors for almost 10 years Uh before I joined the organization as CEO. And I'm just thankful every day that I get to do something that I believe in. Thank you so much. Okay, I think we're almost done, but I wanted to say this. I want to say, hey, thank you. Thank you very much for talking to me about your organization. And I also want to say that over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking with other organizations Mm -hmm. uh, throughout throughout our our area here. Uh, And as Kevin said, uh, there are over 500 nonprofits just in our county. Mm -hmm. And fascinating. So we'll see you later. See you next week on LiveWire.